Hello and welcome to the LandKit Topo workflow how-to video. We're gonna learn about how to utilize the workflow template files for your own projects. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. When we open up the workflow template file, we have a bunch of geometry already in here. This is all reference geometry to allow you to explore the capabilities of the Topo workflow and Topo kit in general, and also test out how the different pieces of the puzzle can be used in order to create your own uh, projects or topographic models. Now we wanna make sure that we go through here and delete all of this input geometry that's already in here. So what we can do is just ensure that all of our layers are turned on so that we can preview all of the geometry that's in the file. And then all we have to do is type in select all. And when we do that, it's gonna select all of the geometry that is currently being previewed in the file. And we're just gonna hit delete so that we can start with a blank canvas. All right, so let's begin by bringing in some survey information in order to start using this workflow. So I'm going to type in import. I'll navigate to my survey file, the site survey DWG. I'll make sure it matches the model units that I'm working in. So in this case, feet, hit OK. So I have this information in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it since they're all curved contours. And I'm going to go to my existing conditions tab here. And under there, I have a topography layer. Beneath this layer, we have a series of layers that are indicating a type of geometry that will be feeding into our workflow. In this case, we have contours, spots, break lines, other geo, mend, and boundaries. Boundaries will indicate the boundary of your existing site that you're working on. In this case, since we're just using um, the survey information, we don't need to create a boundary. But what we're going to do is we're going to move this, uh, this line work to the contours layer. So I'm going to hit change object layer, and you'll see that now it is colored according to that layer. Now, if we had spot elevations coming in with that survey or um, some other source, we could place that into the spots layer. Break lines can be useful, uh, and they process very similarly to contours do, so whether or not you're putting them in contours or break lines, the product will be similar. And then the most important one to remember is other geo, which will accept pretty much any type of geometry, whether that's a mesh or a surface of any kind, um, you can place it in that layer and immediately get working. All right, now that we have our survey information in and categorizing the appropriate layer for our existing conditions, we're going to drag and drop the included workflow grasshopper file into our Rhino space. And once that opens, you'll see that it immediately processes the new geometry that we're working with. One thing you'll see, however, is that the actual mesh and the contours are showing something that's maybe not a little, not quite accurate to what the topography is supposed to be doing. So in this case, we have this unusual flat zone where the contours are supposed to be creating sort of a steady slope from one contour to the other. In this case, we typically recommend that you go through and in your existing category under break lines, you add some geometry that helps guide the mesh into the appropriate reality. So in this case, I'm adding a break line that's connecting this contour to the contour above it. And then once I hit refresh, you'll see that these uh, these new contours that we're generating as a result of generating the mesh are actually reflecting more of the reality of how the site is supposed to look. All right, now that we have a well-articulated existing conditions mesh, let's start to implement some proposed strategies. So under the proposed parent layer, we have the same layer structure as under the existing. And this time we're actually going to open up the topography layers and use the boundaries. The boundaries for the proposed will allow us to remove all of the existing conditions, geometry, and information and then only implement the proposed geometry inf information that we're trying to utilize for that particular area. So you can see once I add a boundary and hit refresh, it's going to just interpolate from one end of the boundary to the other to create the mesh that we're seeing. Once we actually add some break lines in, so we're just gonna create a break line, we're gonna shrink it down a little bit, and we're just gonna keep it that elevation and hit refresh. You can see that now the uh, mesh is going to form to that geometry that I've added in the proposed layer. So as I move this around and adjust it to fit the sort of look and feel of the way that I want to mold the site uh, for my proposed uh, project, um, I can just hit refresh and see these changes happening as we're going. Another great thing about this is that any of the um, features that we add into this layer are only going to affect the proposed as well. So let's say I want to make a one foot wide wall here we can actually add these two curves to the wall curves layer. 
And then once we start adding in some spot elevations, and we'll create a few here that are going to help articulate the wall, we can take these wall spots, we can add them to the wall spots layer, and you'll see that we don't even have to hit refresh for the um, uh, features, we can just add the geometry to those layers and they'll automatically update for us. So now I can start to move these spot elevations up and down and see my wall starting to sculpt and modify the site in the ways that I want it to. Well, hopefully this is helpful in getting you all started and being able to use these templates and workflows for your actual projects or any type of research or analysis you're trying to achieve. Uh, we really encourage you to check out more information on our website, check out the other workflow videos that give you a little bit more overview of how to use the workflow panel, and enjoy the topo modeling that LandKit allows. Thank you.